nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, <laughs> sorry, sorry for the delay. I had an echo and I figured it out. So um, hopefully everything looks and sounds okay. Everything has been unplugged and replugged in since I saw you last. So I, ha I couldn't sort out all the, d the issues until I went live again. So let me lighten this up a little bit, just temporarily. Welcome you guys. Let's see here. That's a little better, right? Let's see. That's a little better. We don't want it too bright. We're going to do some pattern work today. So. <laughs> Sorry it was late, Shim. I figure I was like, oh, he's probably like, wait, I thought I had the time right. <laughs> Hi, Kara. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Margaret. Elena. <clears throat> hey, Louisa. Hey, Gaynor. Hey, Rachel. Hi, Lisa. Welcome, you guys. Nice to see you. I keep thinking the camera's there and it's like moved a foot over, so I may be looking at the wrong one sometimes. Is everything look and sound okay? I know the lighting is a little funky right here. Hi, Karen. Welcome, welcome. Okay, someone tell me it looks okay or and sounds okay. <laughs> Hello, Julie. Hi, Sydney. Nice to see you. Just because I want to make sure there's no echo and it all is okay. That's great. Thanks, Gainer. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. There's a delay from when I say something and when you can type too. It is Sydney. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, you guys. All right, all right, cool. <laughs> all right, so um, continuing my lounge set this month, um, I'm using this really interesting quilted knit. Like it's a knit fabric, it's quilted. Uh, so it is three layers. It's got batting inside and everything. There's like a scrim on the back. So it, it is finished on the other side, which is nice. Some pre-quilteds aren't, you know, you still need to line them. Um, and um, yeah, I'm edging it with this seven berry fabric that I turned into binding. I've got the jacket next to me, I'll show you. I have this scrap of, it's basically Jersey. It's not rib knit, but I'm gonna use it for the waistband. Um, and I didn't have any twill tape, like I wanted a draw cord, but I wanted it to be twill tape. And, uh, I had this in a bright white, so I just soaked it in coffee last night for an hour. And now I have natural colored twill tape, which is great. Um, I'm going to start with the Carolyn pajama bottom, um, mainly because I feel like that's a pattern most people have and I just wanted to demonstrate using an existing pattern to draft something because it's hands down how 75% of pattern drafting happens in the world is using an existing pattern. Not somebody else's usually, if you're professional, you're using your own, but you're starting from something. So um, that's, how, that's how it works. So you can get good sleep last night with off of the, oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, no worries, Elena. Lurk, lurk. Hi, BJ. How's it going? Hi, Anna. All right. 
So um, I have the sleeve pattern that I used to draft. There's a little ghost on it, just because it looked like a little ghost, you know? Um, a little face on it. <laughs> this is the petal hem. So what we drafted this when I did the top, and so it comes around like this, and then it sews like this, and we get this, this petal effect at the bottom here. And uh, let me go full screen. I only sorted out the microphones on these two scenes here, but you can see. Wait, this way? This way, okay. This is the jacket that I made, and I basically used the Tamarack jacket. I didn't really make many modifications to it. I changed the angle of the pocket, and then I also anchored the pocket to the um, jacket. This is the same lining, so it doesn't really look like it. I also bound the edge to make it nice and clean finished. And um, I made this petal hem. So this sleeve has this petal hem effect. I'm trying to show it well here why why am i getting the cameras backwards here we go so i think one error that i made with this pedal hem i think if you wanted to do something like this um and you want the maximum effect of a pedal hem i think you should overlap it the other direction so i i overlapped it going toward the back so you see this long line right here it's going towards the back of the garment i think it would honestly look better if it were flipped and you saw this line going over to the front so like it would basically be like if this sleeve were over here right you would have that going towards the front i can't really imitate it so yeah, while it's there, it's more visible on the back of the body. So, sorry, it's a little dark. <laughs> um, I also, what do you mean I'm on the other side of the room? This is always the room I'm on, on the side when I do the pattern drafting and cutting. Um, since we made this and I did that whole staff, staff, snap little um, tutorial, I wanted to say tutorial and snap all at the same time. I um, ripped out all those snaps except for the bottom here. And I put a little facing behind the center front and then I put them back in. I thought the knit would be heavy enough to carry the snaps. And I was so excited about showing you this little trick with marking your snaps that I just, I don't know, just didn't think it through. So I made a mistake and so I just removed it, put a little band there and reinstalled the snaps. I have a ton of snaps right now because I bought the box. So it felt like I could do that. And I didn't have to rebind it. I just edge stitched it next to the binding. You can't even see it. So it's way sturdier now. I think it'll be great. I'm gonna lower this so she's not so, she's a little bit high up there. All right. I was full screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do full screen on this. I sometimes do that. When I'm showing pattern stuff, I do. <laughs> okay, so I've got the sleeve out from the Tamarack because I figure, hey, it's a good, way to kind of utilize what we've already spent effort on. Um, I think that um, this one could be a little bit of a brain teaser because we have two seams, but I'm up for the challenge, even if I have to fake it, you know? So, all right, so like I said, I'm starting with the Carolyn pajama bottoms. And I have the, there's only really four pattern pieces. I have the waistband, which mine is cut down, uh, and I'm gonna fix that for this pair. I have the pocket and I have the front and the back. So let's move this. I have a link in the description to this crazy fabric too. I got it from Minerva. <laughs> I'm gonna use a really wide elastic this time too. Kind of a little different than what I usually do. Let's tone down the brightness a little bit. How are you all? Sorry, I just like launched right into it because I felt a little bit late. <laughs> What have you guys been working on? What do we think of that? Is that too bright? I'm gonna use a Sharpie. Once we trace these off, I'm gonna be using Sharpie. You know, the most accurate way to draft patterns is with a fat pen. <laughs> but then you can see it. Okay, I need to get, get rid of this little window here. I had all these recordings when I was trying to test the camera or the audio, okay. Oh, Amy, that's funny. Yeah, that was so weird that that crashed. I had never figured that out. That is such a weird... That never happens for me anymore. Like, it's been a long time. 
Remember when we had the rat that was eating the cords in the attic? Not attic, but whatever that building was. All right, so I'm gonna trace this off real quick. And um, I've taped this. I did a few things so you wouldn't have to wait on me doing it. I ironed the pattern pieces and taped them to, with a uh, removable tape, to this piece of uh, paper here. Because it's a thin paper, I'm gonna need to use my ruler to trace up against it. I've tapered this leg. So it's folded back on itself right here. And I tapered it a half inch on the inseam and about three quarters on the outseam. It's a very wide-legged pajama pattern. Um, I still find them to be pretty wide still, but you don't have to do that. Like that is just something I did. And I didn't do it, I obviously didn't do it very like formally. I've gotten that question, like how did you do that? I literally just folded it over and tapered it, blended it in, that's all. Nice, Mary. Does the chat ever show up on the second part? Yeah, it should be there. Is it not there? I feel like, is it not there, Amy? There's a slight chance that when I went live, it wasn't enabled. It should have been enabled, but um, because it's, it's by default enabled for replay, I have chat enabled. But because we weren't using a, um, What's going on here? We weren't using a pre-scheduled stream and we were kind of scurrying to get it back up. It could not be there. I didn't notice that. All right, I'm not going to trace the fly. I'm not gonna do a fake fly on these. That would be a little bit, uh, not, in the, not in the spirit of my lounge pants, like as far as the aesthetic look. Okay, there we go. I can't get that to stay down. <laughs> Something like that. What do I need? I'm going to take this knee notch here. I'm going to take the grain line. Nice long grain line. Thank you, Closet Core. Um, these notches are for the pocket. I don't really need that. I don't need the dot because that's for the fly. Um, and I just need to put this new hem length because I'm not doing the band like I did on the closet core pajamas. I did the band with piping, so I don't need that either. I don't want a quilted jersey fake fly, right? <laughs> I already think it's kind of crazy I'm gonna use the fabric for the pocket, you know? I knew my invisible tape might have sat on here a little too long. Comes off the paper, but it doesn't come off here. I tried your guys' tip. I mean, I've heard this tip before, but you guys, Libby, I think, mentioned it last time we were here, and they, and she said to um, iron on your non-woven fusible interfacing. And look, I did to this pattern piece. It's so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. I just want to go through all my patterns that are tissue and do that now. <laughs> Okay, Let's. if you forget to transfer your grain line, your grain line should always be perpendicular to your hem down here. No ifs, ands, or buts. It is a one of the rare rules that is um, absolute. If it's not, then you might want to worry about the pattern. Just a little bit, or a lot. <laughs> All right, so this is my front, and I left all this extra paper here. So let's transfer our back, and then we'll start drafting. I've got it sitting here on the floor, taped and ready to go. I'm just using some um, printer pa paper from my old plotter. I used to have a plotter a wide format printer. And uh, I'm just using a roll from when I still owned it. This looks a little tight right here. Get everything to relax. I wanted also to tape these yesterday on here so that the paper calmed down a little bit. 
as far as the roll goes, you know. All right, so let's get our grain line on here. This right here is a really sharp tracing wheel. If you want to get into drafting, I, you're going to need one of these. They're really affordable. I've had this one since college, since I was 18 years old. So it, they last. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe they don't, you know, make them the same anymore. I don't know. But um, it's a good investment. If you want to copy garments, even if you don't want to get into pattern drafting, but you want to copy garments, you need one of those. Yeah, exactly. It's it reminds me of those um, felt boards, Shem. You know, like when um, we were in kindergarten, <laughs> and um, the teacher would do this whole story on this this felt piece of felt with all these little felt pieces. Like I feel like, oh, I could do a little felt storyboard with my my pattern. You know. All right, uh, I got a use the tracing wheel for this spot because this was folded up right here when I did the cuff with the band. This is also folded in a little bit more messy right here because of the when it was folded up. We're not even to the fun part. I'm really priming you guys because we're going to start doing more drafting. If you're going to get into sewing, drafting is just such a really nice little tool to have and um, you can really make a lot of your patterns versatile without buying a whole new pattern. I know pattern companies don't want me to say something like that but at the same time if our biggest complaint hands down is fitting right and if you spend a lot of time fitting something you're going to want to use that pattern a lot but you might get sick of the style so this is a way to do that. My, my paper here is just worn away. I'm pretty sure that's where I need to be. So we're just gonna... One of the reasons I'm also using this pattern is with this quilted knit, the quilted knit is very, very stable. Now you can cut a garment in knit that was meant for woven. You might need to change the size of it though, like make it a little bit smaller, depending on the knit you're using. This knit happens to be a very stable knit, meaning it's not the stretchiest. It's got some good stretch in it. Like it'd be great for like a sweatshirt. You know, fleece, like a cotton fleece doesn't really stretch that much. So it's kind of on par with that. And um, I think doing it on the bottoms, there's gonna be a little bit of a like, <laughs> This isn't the ideal fabric for bottoms. I am fully aware of that, but we're going for a cozy set. They sent me a lot more fabric than I asked for. So I thought, you know what, let's just go full and do it and see what happens, right? Um, I think the risks that I'm thinking will happen with using pants in a quilted, this knit fabric, there's a slight chance that the butt will bag out or knees would bag out if I were kneeling a lot. I have had to be sitting in a chair watching TV wearing these. This is this is the use of these. Or just being around the house, like waking up in the morning, throwing them on, right? Um, and I'm not that worried about it because they're a little bit loose. Like the Carolyn pajama bottoms are pretty loose. and um, But they're also still kind of skimming the body, but you can pull them on. You know what I mean? The, I'm using the Carolyn pajama bottoms as my starting point, Sue, you know? So I'm going to be, I'm just tracing it off right now, and then I'm going to I'm gonna start drafting right now. We're not doing a whole lot of changes. We're just doing something, we're just doing something fun with the hem. Nice, Kira. Wow, drafting a skirt for yourself. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna put my pattern pieces away. It's, gosh, it's like a miracle when you iron your pattern pieces. I don't spend a lot of time doing that, I will be honest. I am like of the like, uh, you know, background where I usually, all my patterns were on a heavy paper that hung up. 
So tissue isn't something I deal with a whole lot. And these are definitely used a lot. This pattern has been used a few times now. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna use the existing pocket, but I'm gonna change the waistband. We'll do that in a bit. Let's put this on here. And put our grain line as well. Patterns scare you? <laughs> You mean drafting them or just using them? Is that why you're is that why you're drafting your own? You're not a big fan of the patterns. There we go. All right, so let's look at this petal hem. It's going to be our biggest thing that we do. I'm going to fold up the top to get it out of the way. Since I don't have like a big pattern table. I got to sort of manage my pieces. And I'm just going to put that on here so I don't forget that that's the back. And this is the inseam. And then let's get the front out. I needed that on um, this paper on that side. Oh, well. And this one here, I put the extra paper in the wrong place on that one, but that's okay. With using them. <laughs> so is that why you like to draft, Kara? I mean, I, I actually get that. I wasn't using home patterns for a long time. All right. We did a lot of the brain work on this tamarack jacket. This is my back sleeve and that's my front. So this little overlapping piece went to the back. And this time I would like to do the opposite where the overlap goes towards the front. I know it'll be the opposite of my jacket, but I don't care. We're going to experiment on this and see what we think. So let's kind of orient ourselves. If this center sleeve here you can think, consider the center sleeve being right down the middle of my arm, right? And the middle of your arm is actually facing that way, right? It's not facing forward. So that's another thing to think about. If you really wanted to kind of noodle on your pedal hem and, and give it the most impact when someone's standing there facing forward, you would want to like bias it really far forward. Like you would want this little petal overlap to be like way over here, like more in the middle between the center of your sleeve and the underarm on the front. That's where you would see it the most from the front of facing a person, right? So if we have this little overlap, this little swoop, in this case with pants, the front of the pant actually does face the person, faces out, right? So we could have our maximum amount of petal going right across the front of this pant right here, right? I think that would be kind of nice. And then this side can come around underneath. And this would be the front of our leg. It would look more like, I'm going to get a different color here. It would look like that. We're actually, we want it more like, do we want it like that high up? Maybe not. Maybe we, maybe we want it, um, maybe I should have started with pencil. <laughs> Let's see. Let's just draw our petal here. Something like that. That would be the front of my pant. I like this idea. You know what's interesting about this idea is that I wouldn't have to change the back as much. And I like this idea because straddling the, in, the out seam was a little bit, I knew it was going to be tricky. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Oh, Terry, you know what I wanted to tell you? You gave me the idea of using the, a, a magnet to hold your presser feet. 
You know what? You know that little like cart that's by my machine, the the like blue one. That is metal, so I put a few magnets on it, and then I just put my feet on there, and it and it works awesome. I don't think it's the best place for them because I could maybe potentially knock one off on the ground and not notice it. But I did find this little piece of metal that I have. It's for like hanging on the wall, and you put like keys on it, and it wasn't being used. And so I'm gonna put that up and use it. So thanks for that idea. I love that. <laughs> Are you, oh, you think I just, oh yeah, I think a lot of people are, have that. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, what do you guys think? Like pedal at the front here. So it's looking more like this is gonna come across the front to the end seam. And this comes from the back, this would be gone. So it would be more like this little shape here. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a chance and do this in red. So this is what I'm thinking. This would be my pedal. Do you think it should face forward or should it be on the side? Because when, when we draw something with a pedal hem, we usually draw it so that you can see it in the photo facing the person, right? So, um, oh, cool, Terry, yeah. Yeah, they're right there, it's great. And it takes up less room in my drawer. Now I have a bunch of feet, so I gotta try some of them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just how it works for you. No, I think, Kira, that there's, yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely a method. <laughs> that's mostly, that's usually how a designer works. A designer who drafts patterns. Some, some designers aren't drafters. That's a whole topic. Yeah, you think in the front? I think in the front. I like this. I think it would have the biggest impact right there. That's what it would look like. So this little piece right here, this is gonna be really easy to draft. We just need to put this little piece right here to the inseam of the back. This is way faster than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna use my rotary knife to um, cut this off right here, like this. And then this piece here, we're gonna bind this right here. We don't need all this. Okay, and then, um, but we do need this paper. Oh, it's gonna be like this. We're gonna um, overlap. What's the seam allowance on the Carolyn's? They're half inch, aren't they? Hi, Martina, how's it going? Yeah, you like the challenge more. I get that too. All right. Um, Five eighths, I'm wrong, okay. Let's uh, overlap this one and a quarter inch line here. I'm gonna put this black line up to that one and a quarter inch line, just like that. And we're gonna tape it on here. You know, I was actually thinking I would, this would take a little bit longer and I wouldn't have time to cut these out, but I'm really glad I can cut these out because I'm not sure I'll have time to, to cut them out. Um, off camera, <laughs> so it's good. All right, put this here. And so now we're going to swoop this in here like that. And then we're also going to add some seam allowance to this edge to underlap to this front pant here. This is what we're looking at right now, like this, right? So we can blend in, I'm just gonna do a half inch. Yeah, ooh. do I want a half inch or three eighths? I feel like three eighths is enough. I'm gonna do three eighths like this, like this. 
And then this little guy is gonna sit right on top of there. We're gonna top stitch it down. I'm having trouble remembering. I know that like overlapping this to sew it was a little tricky and I had a notch. And this time it's feeling like the notch is unnecessary because we have this hard corner here. And we have a hard corner here. And basically what we're doing is this, but we could What we want is a notch here. That's where we want a notch. We're gonna put a notch here. This is our, our goal for when we overlap, right? <laughs> I think lists are uh, literally what make me functioning human being. <laughs> And when I feel totally terrible at the end of the day, I can tell it's because I didn't make a list. And it'll be like a few days in a row. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't make a list. Even if I don't even look at the list, if I just write it down at the beginning of the day. <laughs> I do something similar like when I'm about to record a video. And even though I know exactly how it sews together, I don't even need to look at the instructions, um, I, but I want to follow their instructions in the order that they have them laid out, just in case someone's like using them as a companion, right? Um, I write them out in like a shorthand. I just, not like a foreign language shorthand, just a <laughs> shorthand of mine. And then I may not even look at that. It, it just helps me so much just to write out the steps, read it through. I don't even do that for live streams. <laughs> Okay, right here, I think I'm gonna add myself. The problem with these notches, these aren't really typical notches. You'd never see a notch like this in uh, the garment industry or in manufacturing because this edge right here will be finished and so will this edge right here. And so what we're probably gonna do is we're gonna do the whole out seam first. We're gonna sew the out seams together and then we're gonna bind this hem edge and then we're gonna overlap this and sew the inseam. That's, that's the order of operations here. Um, and when your edge is already finished, you don't wanna have notches that have been covered up by something, but we're home sewing, so we get to give ourselves the gift of notches. So we're gonna get one right here too. That's what I meant to do. Oh, I start millions of jobs in the middle of time too. Yeah. It feels so good. I just, you know, reorganized my whole space here, um, rebuilt the whole streaming rig. My husband built me it, which was really cool. And um, it feels so efficient in here. So excited. Okay. Oh, we need a notch on this end here. Whoops. Right here. All right. That is, uh, that's pretty much sorted. I'm gonna blend this in a little bit here. Our puddle hem is pretty much done. Okay, so let's do the waistband. So I don't really need to change anything except the width of the waistband. Let's get rid of all that paper there. That's what's bugging me. Does that sound super annoying? I would probably leave a stream if I heard that paper cutting sound. I'm just trimming off a little bit, make this easier. All right, it's over. Just gonna fold this up, make it easier to deal with.
Oh, that's interesting, Elena. An intellectual, like some sort of written version or organization. What is the difference between uh, physically and intellectually? I mean, often I only look at sewing instructions and pattern if it's something I haven't done before. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking for a piece of tape I do not need, actually. I kind of like, like all the trends of all the ADHD TikToks and stuff like that and neurodivergence and stuff like that. I think a lot of people can identify in some way or another on a lot of those, like, spectrums, if you want to call them a spectrum. Hey, Lindsay. And you know, honestly, it just, for me, it is what it is. I think if you're someone young and um, you have people involved with your teaching, that it helps to maybe categorize and identify so you can get the right tools. But as a grown adult that was never like, I don't know, like told I had these, these like ways I did things, I think those things really just showed up as friends or not people not not wanting to be friends with me because whatever I'm a weirdo to them or maybe workplaces people didn't you know like learning how to deal with people in a workplace but we didn't have those tools right and the thing was like I don't know I had to come up with my own ways to navigate the world but not knowing I had something to that I, so long story short the way I look at that is an, as an adult is that it is what it is and I'm happy with who I am and I love those little things that make me who I am. And if I didn't have them, I might not do the things I do as well. So I, um, I don't think of it as anything but a, a, an asset. <laughs> so not that you guys are saying it's not an asset, but I guess I just got tired of seeing every little TikTok and video and everything about that and I was just like okay fine so what we have that <laughs> I'm over I'm over I'm over like the labeling that's not who I identify myself as you know what I mean hey hey May May how are you have you been sewing some it's nice to see you okay May May just okay just I want to ask you a quick question you can just say yes or no. We don't have to get into it here. Are you watching the series? <laughs> May is someone I know from my, my The Last of Us um, world. <laughs> I'm just putting this on here so I can get the complete waste amount. <laughs> Can you, Julie? <laughs> yeah, May, are you awesome? Heck yeah, exactly. Okay, where's my elastic? Yeah, I'm. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I just love that it's like fleshing out this world we've all wondered about. Oh, so good. <laughs> you should not have Terry. Why not? Is it too scary? It's pretty. My husband said the other day, he was like, this is a, this is dark. Like this is tough. This is a really tough series. And I, and I said, I know it's a really tough world. And I, I was like, do you think you'd keep watching it if I wasn't such a big fan? He, he wasn't sure if he would have. He said, but the episode, the second episode, he was like, that was such an incredible story. and He loved it so much that it keeps him going. And I'm really glad because he doesn't play the game. He doesn't know the story. He doesn't know what the possibilities are in that world and what will happen to understand why we're all so in love with it. <laughs> anyway, it's way too scary for me. I'm sorry, Terry. I'm sorry. I did tell people if you're scary and, and you don't like stressful things, it it is definitely that. You can't stop them. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, May. I'm listening to the podcast too. 
It's really good. It's really good to hear them flesh it out. Best series of 2023. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to, I'm not going into anybody's live streams, May, because I don't want to hear that about the, because there's a lot of snobs in our little world. <laughs> like the true fans, they're a little bit snobby. I'm a little worried they're going to like trash it. And I'm like, I'm not up for that. Yeah, at least this one, Shem, is, a, is pretty far-fetched. I mean, they had a mycologist on Science Friday. Do you guys listen to Science Friday with Ira Flato? It's a really good science-y show on Fridays on the radio. And um, talking about the likelihood of this. And I was like, Last of Us made it to Science Friday. Yeah. Okay, I'll get back on track, sorry. Okay, so I have this elastic. This is what I'm planning to use for the waistband. So we need our waistband. I'm gonna fully enclose the elastic. I am also going to use a draw cord because I am a little thinking like, I'm using really wide elastic, so this is probably overkill doing the draw cord, but I thought it could be fun because these are gonna sew together probably really quickly. Um, they'll probably be kind of heavy. They're, they're quilted knit. So I think the draw cord could add a little bit of, you know, I can squat safely <laughs> while wearing it. So same, Anna, same, exactly. I've gotten some good book recommendations from that show. <laughs> yeah, I agree, May, exactly. But w when you hear the podcast, it does kind of help smooth over those those particular rough edges. Hi, Danny. <laughs> That's funny, Shim, yeah. I actually really like apocalyptic stories. I do not know why, but I just do. Okay, sorry. I know people are like, ugh, stop. Just please talk sewing. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> okay, two inches wide. So what I need is something that's four inches wide in the casing, plus we're gonna add a little bit, like a quarter of an inch for the thickness of the elastic. The thickness of the um, knit is going to play a role in tightening up that amount when it goes over it. So really adding about three eighths just for that interior casing would be a probably safe bet. When we get there, we can always trim off of the casing. Um, and then um, uh, I'm going to add the seam allowance as well. Now, this particular waistband, I'm just realizing, I don't think I'm gonna clean finish this one. So it's probably going to be folded wrong sides together with the elastic on the inside and then overlocked on. I think that that would be the best thing to do because it's gonna be the least bulky. I, yeah, Shem, I think we are very valuable. I am such a, uh, like, a fashioner. Like, I fashion, you wouldn't believe the things I've done in here. Like, I, like the things that I make just from what I have on hand, that is my, that is like, I have a superpower with that. Like, I, I am not ashamed to admit, admit that. I am who you want if you need things to get worked. Like, I should have been an engineer. <laughs> I, like, that is my strong thing. I can see instantly some, why something won't work, too. It's cool. <laughs> right, Shim, exactly. All right, and so um, my seam allowance is 5 8 for this. That's quite a bit for knit. I'm going to leave it on there because the um, quilt, quilted knit is a little bit fatter. It might help me tame, get the edges nice and flat and tame if I have more to work with. So we're going to make this 4 and 3 8 plus one and a quarter, so uh, five and five eighths. But I'm gonna write that down to make sure. <laughs> so we need this to be four and three eighths for the casing plus one and a quarter. Yep, so five and five eighths. Is that what I said? I think that's what I said. So we're gonna make this exact same piece and um, this, you know, should fit still. It could be a little bit off by now because uh, my little tissue paper has been well loved, to say it nicely. So we'll just weight this down. Please. OK. 
killing me here. Here we go. Oh my gosh. This isn't this isn't how I usually do this kind of drafting and stuff, so we're already a little bit winging in here. And you can just lay your waistband on there. More accurate thing would be to obviously measure it. But we're just going to put it raw edge to raw edge here. And it's perfect. So we just need this piece right here in the proper width. Let's see if this will work. Solving problems, Julie, right? It's so underrated. I, I literally thought, like, I wish there was a job for that. I love doing it. I think the, the drawback to that is I have found that um, sometimes people take advantage of you for that. And I do think, like, I really thought I had, like, the best friend group for years. And now I feel a little bit more like they just had me around because they wanted something, <laughs> you know? Even to this day, like, people only, like, contact me when they want something. Like, want to know how to do something, you know? And it's like, hi, how are you? <laughs> You're making leather shoes this weekend. That's pretty cool. You've been... <laughs> That's funny, Anna. I, I have definitely uh, assessed people by how I thought they would survive in a situation like an apocalypse. I know that's terribly judgmental. <laughs> but, you know, I don't want the whole burden. I, I want to be around people that are going to make it too so that as a group we have some skills that will carry us all through. Oh yeah, Terry, you're in for sure. You are in. <laughs> Alina, I'm I'm excited about your more of your leather crafting. I did I tell you I showed my dad your leather crafting. I was like, oh look at this gal is doing this like cool class. All right. My paper bin is a little too close to my fabric bin right now. All right, uh, for this piece here, we're gonna do the, I'm gonna put the grain line parallel to the short end here, but grain line isn't as important as stretch direction. Um, I think I was just talking about someone with this in, in one of the workshops. So this is my good ruler, I don't know why I keep using, I usually have a ruler for I'm using it with my pen. So when you have things that matter about stretch, uh, I like to do a grain line like, like this. It's usually actually in green as well. I do a, like a broken arrow going across the greatest stretch. One place I work, this is what they would do. They would go like this. So it was very obvious. It was also in green. So that's the more important thing, and I don't usually have this grain line right here. But in this case, for the fabric I'll be using, the grain line and this stretch line are indeed the same on the fabric. Sometimes they aren't. <laughs> there are some wily stretch fabrics out there. You have a group like that? I should nice. Oh, neat. Oh, shoot, Elena. Yes, yeah, sometimes removing those snaps is really hard. Okay, this is the only piece that we didn't really touch, and that's on my pocket piece, so let's start cutting this out. It takes so few pieces <laughs> to make this nice pair of pants. And we're gonna get rid of these two. We're going to get rid of our straight edge and let's get this fabric sorted here. I might need more binding, but I was going to check to see if what I had 
is going to work. So I want my pocket openings and I want my hem of my pant. That's what I need for one half. So let's see. Ooh, we have enough. Nice. Okay. I don't think I'd use, you know what? I could have, I could have made a draw cord out of this. Oh, why didn't I, th I'm going to do that. Yeah. Let's make a draw cord out of this. Right. Oh, see, this is not how you wind up binding, by the way. I don't care what anyone says. This is how you do it. Put your spool on the table like this. So now you get a nice smooth edge. Don't pull hard. You don't want to stretch it out. Get this all untwisted. This is a, this is like indeed a gift to your future self doing this. Getting a nice smooth, this is homemade binding, so it won't be perfect, but look at that, you get a nice smooth roll. All right. Cut some um, cross cut for a draw cord. Oof. Maybe I'll do binding. I have, that's my longest width. That'll be fine. It's not, I think cross cut would be a better drawstring, but I've used binding as drawstring and it's fine. We'll make it one and a half inches wide so we can put it through the binding attachment because we love a good gadget. I got two, wait, or three, three new feet. Maybe I'll just do like an impromptu live stream inside the guild and play around with those feet or something someday. I have to re record a video all of a sudden, so um, I'm scrambling, scrambling a little bit on that. Like I'm not scrambling and I don't want to be scrambling. I guess that's how I should put it. <laughs> so that's my first priority. You need spools for your uh, binding. Um, well, you could use like a, um, a paper towel roll or a toilet paper roll. If you're ever at a fabric store that has fabric tubes that they're getting rid of, those will work. That's what that is. Because we would send our fabric to them and it was always on a tube because it was like 90 yards. And so it would be a 90 yard continuous piece of fabric. And they, that's long enough for me for sure. Um, they will, they take the fabric and take it off the spool and then cut it so that you, they piece it together so that it's on the bias and then they re-roll it on the tube. And then they just, this is, this is how I imagine, I'm sure it's a little different, but then they take it to a chop saw and just chop it. And so they go right through the tube. So th that's what it is. I didn't cut the tube. You mean Elena? The, like, like um, towel rolls and toilet paper rolls, you can just take them with your scissors. Like they're really lightweight. You could use plastic pipe, that's true. Um, all right, so let's cut this little scrap of jersey that I have for the waist. I don't think this is enough. Oof. I need two of, of these. Oops, here it is. Ooh, I don't think this is enough. That is nowhere near enough. Shoot. <sighs> I didn't want to cut into this piece of fabric. I have this other piece of jersey, which is very similar. I also have um, this knit. The knit would be cozier, so you can't really see it, but this is a um, actual knit fabric, like sweater knit. 
It's a sweater knit, very lightweight sweater knit, or I have a jersey. Hmm, what do I think? Not sure. I feel like I have a lot more of this than I do this. So maybe I should do the sweater knit. Oh, that stuff's so fiddly. <laughs> All right. Oh, you use the candle, that's funny. You vote Jersey. I think I have more of the sweater knit. You know, so if I wanted to use this for, because I made that um, cardigan with this and I had a lot left over. This stuff is so nice. Do I have enough of this? Wait, oh, this is folded wrong. Um, sorry, so I know this is really dark, which is kind of a bummer to look at. I just want to get a, more of a gauge of the fabric quantity that I have here. Is this twisted? This stuff is wide, man. It is really wide. I think maybe I should look at this more like if I cut something out of this, it would be long sleeves. If I cut something out of the jersey, it would be, it could be either. Can I get this across? I could get this across. So I would just lose five inches of this. And that leaves quite a bit. Oh, I'm so nervous now. Let's see. I thought I had rib uh, knit when I planned on this, and it was just the other day that I realized I didn't. See you, May. Sleep well. Thanks for popping by. Okay. That's the cut edge. This is the selvage. Hmm. All right. We'll we'll go Jersey. That sweater knit though is so yummy. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, that sounds so soft. I think this will stretch better with the elastic though. Oh my gosh. I have this piece folded down here correctly, so we're just gonna go with this edge here. Cut a little off grain though. Surprise, surprise. See that difference here? It's so dark, sorry. I have this reminder in my phone right now because it's one of those things I don't wanna forget if I'm ever in front of an expert about how knit fabric is made because like the, the funny thing is about knit, like I get a lot of questions about knit fabric and I know what I know, but I'm not an expert in textile, the, the, you know, the making of textiles, right? Um, and one of the interesting thing is when you think of, when you think of knits, right? When you think of knits, knits can have stretch going across and in the length and both. Now, it is not just a matter of knitting and purling or it being double faced, which would have both knit and purl on both sides. There's something else going on. It's not just fiber content. So why, why 
why does some fabric have this much stretch and some have this much stretch? Now I know people are going to say it's the fiber, it's the way it's knit, but it's not consistent. Like I've been, I've been doing this a long time and I have never figured out why or seen any kind of consistency between them. And, and then why does one have a length stretch and one not have a cross stretch? You know, it, it's, it's really interesting and I, I would really love to hear someone talk about it and explain it better because I just think it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, it could, it could be, I, but warp and weft knitting. I don't know what warp and weft knitting is. Warp and weft for me refers to weaving, but I, 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 like I said, I'm not an expert in this. That's why it's very interesting. <laughs> Julie. Yeah, I'm just kind of, uh, I think it would be a really interesting discussion with someone. The other interesting thing about knits is, um, cause I worked somewhere where we did garment dyeing and that's different than piece dyeing. Piece dyeing is when you dye the fabric and then you cut and sew your garments from it, right? Uh, whereas garment dyeing is you make the garment and then you dye it in the fabric colors you want, in the colors you want. A eight way stretch, oh my God. Th that is, for me, I see that kind of advertising. And for me, that just screams, oh, you actually don't know what you're doing. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> eight way stretch, boy. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, that sounds familiar, Rachel, thank you. Fiber additives and gauge. See, I'm not sold on that. Or the gauge. Like, I've thought about this, you guys. Like, I, I do believe those impact it. I don't know. And maybe that is all it is. Maybe that is all it is. That it's just, it literally is the thing that would make the most sense, right? I mean, you know, that is kind of nice when that happens. Um, that it's just what it's made from and what kind of knitting. But like I started with when I started talking about this, it's I've seen fabrics, and, and here's the deal, you guys. I, I can also say this, is that like when I worked somewhere where we did garment dyeing, that's just one of the places I worked with knits because I started in knitwear. <clears throat> you would get the exact same product from the exact same manufacturer. So let's say we get cotton lycra knit for leggings, right? Each lot is different. So you could have the exact same product, specific, spec and everything that way. And we would get it in. And if it wasn't the same lot number, for the next batch, we would have to do a bunch of testing because often what happens is the stretch and the shrinkage will be different from lot to lot. The vendor doesn't change, the product didn't change, but when it's made, things happen. So anyway, I need to stretch suit. Yeah, Rachel, let me know. Yeah, I'm not surprised that the football players have stretch in those. They've got to. That's the boardiest fabric around for athletic apparel. <laughs> yeah, you know what's really funny, Shim, is that... Um, okay, so this fabric's kind of weird. Um, the... Um, I'm just gonna look at the edge here. I'm gonna, I'll brighten it up in just a second, but I'm going to, I'm gonna even up this edge here. So I know that I'm on the same line just to see. But um, 
When people were really going, oh, it's so far off, though. Oh, no, it's not. Um, people were really going gaga for waterproof fabrics. One year, this the ven one of the vendors came to OR, which is like this outdoor show um, called Outdoor Retailer. Uh, they came to the show and they had 100% cotton pants that they had made. Like they were selling the fabric, so it was a fabric, but they had a few, they always have a few like samples in their booth to kind of showcase their fabrics. And one of them was 100% cotton waterproof breathable pants. <laughs> I worked somewhere doing waterproof breathable garments and we were all just like, oh, please. <laughs> like literally all of us were like, okay, we, we love the, the, the like beauty, the, not the beauty, but the beauty of these technical fabrics and what they could do was really cool. We all believed in them 100%. We designed garments around them and, and um, they were our staple, right? But all of us wanted natural fibers to wear day to day clothing in at the end of the day. Like even we were just like, come on, you know, like we don't want to live like that. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, exactly, Mary. I bet that's exactly it, how the yarn is spun and what yarn they use. But I'm telling you, there is, I, I, what I would like to hear, this is probably a fruitless endeavor, but I am uh, lining up the stripes. Um, what I would like to hear from someone like that is, yeah, that's really hard to regulate the stretch. Because that would make me feel so much better about so many things uh, surrounding knit. Especially when I worked at that place where, you know, we'd get a lot, a different lot in. And it wasn't even that we would all go, oh, shoot, another lot. It happens all the time because they can only, you know, make so much fabric in one lot, right? There's only so much yarn on cones to knit the fabric together, right? And so um, we got multiple lots per season. So when we we're manufacturing a, a line um, for that season, there would sometimes be two or three lots of the same fabric for certain fabrics because those were fabrics we used a lot of. And so there would be more than one production pattern for one garment. You know, you think of production patterns in a factory as that there's just one pattern to make that garment, but there's not when your garment dying because of shrinkage. And sometimes there's not with knits because of stretch. So, all right. Are we cutting it close on fabric? Let's see. Where this conversation went. So wait, was the suit you were talking about, Shem? It wasn't like a business suit. I thought you were talking about like a business suit. I didn't know it was a. You mean a athletic suit? I feel like that's because they're like, oh, I don't want to wear a suit. I um, if I have to wear a suit, it better be comfortable. <laughs> and I got all these muscles. Can I get these side by side? Because I would worry less about this. I need to move some stuff on my table here. I'm just gonna get, move this here. I just need to check something before I start cutting. This end of my fabric has a cut piece on it. So what I'm trying to avoid is turning one piece upside down right now. but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna to have to do that. So if this guy was way up here, this is as high as I can go. Yeah, we're, we're turning, we're turning up to the ground. We knew it was gonna be tight. I know it works though, so stop giving me a heart attack. Let's see, I think it goes like this. That's how it's going to fit. This, these little whoop de doos are, are actually kind of a problem. 
It was a business name. Oh, okay, okay. Ten. Ten. I cannot guarantee there will be um, adequate pattern matching. So if this is triggering for you, <laughs> I'm just warning you right now. All right, let's just get it on grain though. All right, we have this one. I can see my cut line on here. And then this one can fit in this little nook here. Or, ooh, I am cutting it close, you guys. A lot closer than I thought. I laid this out and everything, so I, make, I wanted to make sure. It's this right here. It's this. It's the pedal. It's the pedal is what gonna throw things off here. Let's just see where we're at on the grain. Okay, this can go over. And then we're at that. Are we, are we there? That is eight and a quarter. Oh, that needs to go over more. By a lot. Okay, so then we'll move this one down there a little bit more. I can't move that, I can't move that. I'll just move it this way more. All right. Ooh, we're cutting it close. Do I have room for pockets? I think I have room for pockets. Good thing I don't need the waistband. But we're gonna use all this fabric they gave me. All right. Oh, I hate it when I don't cut the paper first and it's a thick fabric like this. Maybe I'll use scissors today. Wait. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of scissors. But I don't like my paper getting ruined either. So much better when you do the cross screen. I know I had a ton, but I'm doing a, I did a full long sleeve jacket with pants. So yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely using every bit of it. It's so wide. Like you don't, you wouldn't really have to buy much to make a project. I'm so paranoid I'm cutting off the long spot there. <laughs> Not on your watch. <laughs> Um, I would like some notches right here. And where's my other knee notch? Did I not mark it over there? It's not that. We have these. I don't know if you can see this. This is the pedal hem notches that those two that I added right down here. This is when my table is just a little too small. I could have started it way over here. At least you would have gotten the uh, lower pant here but I will show you. The little bit of fiber that's in between the two layers sometimes doesn't cut all the way through. We have our petal hem here. And those were the two notches right there that I did. All right, so this one, I'm 
move this over here. Put it a little lower. It's this upper part I'm having trouble getting to fit. But um, we could flip this over and look at the fabric from this side, because this is the side I have some chunks cut out right up at the top here. Yeah, I wonder, I wanted to know about those color catchers, Shim. People are always recommending them. I don't know where one gets a color catcher. <laughs> I have to say, I have not looked very hard. I'm sure it's really obvious. I just kind of figured it'd be something at the, the grocery store, you know, with the, with the um, detergent. I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm a little bit of a curmudgeon about buying gadgets to get something done. I, should, I just feel like I shouldn't have to do that, you know. So that's just on me. But I ruined a whole cut of knit because of that. All right. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. This is what I meant to do. I think I could, maybe I get it in better if I uh, flip it over like this. Oh, actually, let's cut off the paper. Sorry. They are in the same section. Oh, what does it look like then? Is it like a, I don't even know what it is. Like, is it like a, a ball or beads or are they? No, low, Nancy. How's it going? They look like dryer sheets. Oh, uh, they look like dryer sheets. That's the, 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 so interesting that I've fabricated this whole, what I, this is what I fabricated in my head. I fabricated a plastic ball that was um, like, a, like a grid so that you could see inside there, right? And then you would put a ball inside there that caught the color like a like a like a like a felt ball in there or something okay okay you put them in the washing machine and so do you use this while you're pre-washing your fat oh my gosh i just cut that so badly um do you use this when you're pre-washing your fabric or afterward oh they're stinky why do they have to be stinky I don't really like scented things. I will say, remember I told you guys we got that weird, not weird, but my weird thing that I bought for people for Christmas this year <laughs> was something from a YouTube ad. <laughs> and I got it more as like a, this is such an extravagant, funny thing to get and it's Christmas time. And my brother is really likes laundry scented things. Like he likes the, he likes using laundry scents. I don't. Um, my daughter does too. She likes using those little, those little beads you throw in. I don't. <laughs> and, um, but I saw this brand called Laundry Sauce. I feel like I'm doing an ad for them. I'm not. Um, they should pay me. <laughs> but um, Laundry Sauce. Oh, look at this. I have so much more room now that I cut off all that paper. But we, we don't have it on green yet. Um, and they make actually really nice scents. And it comes like this, the scent is a liquid in a little um, dissolvable bag. So you don't want to touch them with wet hands. And you just put that in there so you don't have to deal with those beads everywhere. Um, and the scents are actually really, really nice. They're normal. And they have dryer sheets too. So it's the first time I've been using those consistently. 
So, um, anyway. <laughs> this was so much easier now that I um, took all that paper off. Different brand. Color, okay. Especially pre-wash. Okay, wait, I gotta, I gotta scroll back and see what you guys are saying. I need to understand this. You put it in the wash. I usually use two with things I'm sure will bleed a lot. I use it with every wash I do. Oh, especially pre-wash. Yeah, exactly. I never heard of them either until I made rainbow colored cloth out of batik fabrics. Batiks are usually really um, stable though. You didn't get a scent off of them. Okay, use color cards on denim and both the washing machine and dryer still were stained blue. Yeah. I'm really glad that nobody's noticed that at my house, but mine are stained blue too. Same with my last truck that I owned, this the car seat, when I got into and out of that little spot, stained blue. Denim is a different beast. You use more than one. Color catchers make a difference, but not enough for indigo dyed things. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about the indigo stuff. The shout color catchers are unscented. Oh, thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, you know, oh, okay. Interesting, it's a sheet. I'm getting those. Let's just see how, where this uh, quilting line is going to be. I mean, it, it is going to be um, um, petal hemmed. <laughs> I don't know if that's really a verb, <laughs> but I didn't put a notch over on here. Oh, this is the wrong side here. Let's try and gauge where this is at. Yeah, this right here. Okay, 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 okay. Look at all that matches. I mean, I'll take that. We're gonna run with that. We're not even gonna think about it. We're just gonna go, let's do it. I wasn't gonna try and match my quilt stripes, but, oh, but they're not matching on the hem, you guys. This is the one thing I will say about this fabric is you could drive yourself a little bit crazy trying to get these lines on the quilted lines to be perpendicular to a grain line on your fabric. Um, I struggled a lot with it on the Tamarack jacket too. My hem is going to look a little bit crooked. Thankfully the petal hem is going to help us out here. I, it's still bugging me. I, I, this is my, this is my discomfort showing. We're just gonna, we're just, I'm just gonna play a little bit, just a little bit with it. So, can I get these a little bit more looking perpendicular to the grain line? I don't know. Okay, so we want it to hang off about that much. Maybe if I raise it up here, I will still get into that little nook there. I'm looking at this lot, there's quilted lines, I'm looking at them in relation to this hem here. And then I want it to hang off about that much. All right, so. If we go with something like this, and let's see where our grain line's at. A little far away, needs to go like here. All right. It's just not hanging off the same amount, you know? You know, you really distort your garment if you spend a lot of time. See, this is one thing. I don't know, like, I don't know much about this fabric. So this is not a commentary on this fabric at all, but um, like at all, like it, I just want to bring it up because we've been talking a little bit about knits and stuff like that. But um, better quality knits <laughs> are better quality um, and they will 
you know, if you get something really, really inexpensive that started out really inexpensive, it could be a little harder for you to um, avoid twisting of your fabric um, and some grain line issues when you're wearing it, just so you know. Just like most things, you know. I don't want to say you get what you pay for because sometimes price is just not an indication of things like that. Whoops. But it can be. I would be a little suspicious. I would check it out. <clears throat> Wait, what? No, I don't want to run an ad. Oh, you were told the red was likely to run on the batiks? Yeah. Let's make sure to unfold the sheets and stick them in different parts of the washer when I use it. Smart. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's good to know, Elena. That would probably would have been my next question about uh, you could just leave them in the dryer. It doesn't like, yeah, okay. They're dry. <laughs> you only use super at the top. No, I did not. It's just ink. Sorry. Just ink. Sorry. Yeah. I did that during one of the Vlogmas videos and I recorded those without editing and um, <laughs> it almost, yeah, became a problem because I was bleeding. I wasn't hurting. I was just bleeding and I was trying to hide it in the video. I think I mentioned it casually. I was like, yep, I can't nick my finger there, but it's fine. <laughs> Just so it, people weren't like, what's going on with you? Why are you holding your hand like that? All right, so we want this notch here. And I just have one on this one. Okay, and we don't really need any others on here. Oh, I had that knee notch. Which, you know, with the knits, we'll take it. Never know if it gets kind of crazy. I don't have one over here, but we'll just put a notch there. Okay. So we just have our pocket left. And we have this fabric left. So we're doing pretty good. Kind of a weird shaped piece. There's the cap of my sleeve. Could I even fit it right here? I was gonna pull this apart, but maybe I can. Um, uh, Julie, I I don't really need it. I just left the knee notch on mainly because I was thinking, oh, you know, um, it might be nice to have a guide as I'm sewing a long straight seam, especially when it's a knit that's a little bit. You know, since it's a knit. <laughs> Knits can be a little bit, you know, wiggly. Yeah, look at how um, unstraight that is. Let's go from this side. We'll cut. Get one here. And then we'll... We need a left and a right. Don't forget to flip. Like that is cut. That is cut on the line there, right there. So, oh, you know what? You know what would be a nice touch is if the um, angle of the pocket matches the knit, the lines, I'm not speaking correctly. But in other words, if this right here, these lines right here could match my, my pocket. So we're gonna put this on here, line up the lines just like that.
and then we'll have matching knit. We're actually gonna do it like this because it might not match down there very well. So we'll just lay this on here like that. And we'll cut out one at a time. That'll be my April Fool's joke for you guys. I'll do some uh, some little crazy thing with a Sharpie and my rotary knife, so beware. I've already told you what my April Fool's joke will be. <laughs> okay, so we have one. And this one, I'm not even gonna assume that my pocket will be the same left and right. This one will go with this one here. We'll just put this pocket with this one. And then for this one, we'll get this line. Do I have enough fabric up here? We'll see. I'm not really focused on the triangles, obviously. And we'll get this one. My scientific way, oh, there's not enough there. Shoot. Didn't I cut a piece of fabric off? Let's see. It wouldn't be very funny if I just uh, made it so I can't get two matching pockets with it. Well, let's see if we can. I think we can right here. Let's see. Oh yeah, we got it, okay. Barely. I could probably move it that way a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, line that all up like this. I made a sponge cake for my husband one year. I had to have a real edible cake as backup. <laughs> backup cakes are always a smart, you know, thing. <laughs> I love backup plans. You know me. I'm always bringing those up. You know what is going to be um, crazy, you guys? I think I finally solved the whole issue in the guild where Apple doesn't work. I haven't said anything because I wanted to make sure it was happening, but it is. There's only, I had something like 12 plans that I had to submit to Apple to get approved and all but one has gone through. I'll bet the last one will go through today. <laughs> so... No more me explaining. You have to exit the app, go to a browser. I am so excited. It's like those little quality of life things. Plus it's less confusing for everybody. It was just such a weird thing that they, they would do, you know? All right, let's put everything away here. Look at this scrap of fabric we have. It is uh, definitely scraps. It might make good pieces. This is not a scrap. This is my pant leg. <laughs> that is all I have as, as far as scrap goes. All right, we're going to pin this one here. Yeah, guild. Okay. All right, so we're ready to go. We have the, um, let me move this bin back over here. Ooh. I propped a, a picture. I brought a picture and I propped it up over there. 
I forgot it was there. All right, so I have my waistband, which is gonna be in this jersey with elastic. I don't think I have any eyelets to do the draw cord with eyelets. Maybe I do, let's see. Maybe I do. That would be kind of fun to do an eyelet. Um, I think there's one eyelet in here. And then I have these really tiny ones. Oh, what are these? Oh! I have one eyelet here. Eyelets come in a strange quantity sometimes. Let's get rid of those. Oh, but you know what? This eyelet right here, it's kind of gigantic though. That's too big. It does match this one in here sort of. So maybe I should keep those together. Um, I think I could get my twill tape through here. Let's just try one. Oh yeah, a Spanish snap. A Spanish snap could work. I wish you could do them both together, you know, but you'd have to do two separate ones, but that would be fine. I used up almost all the fabric. Oh, Amy, let me tell you about the Spanish snap. <laughs> Barbara told me about them. I knew what they were, but I didn't know they were called a Spanish snap. Um, they're in the buttonhole SBS, by the way, all about how to do them. And I did one on the Merriam trousers by Cash Moret instead of doing a buttonhole. And so basically it's a faced buttonhole. And the, the um, term Spanish snap comes from when you push the facing through the little hole of that you've created for your buttonhole and you go, you like, pull the fabric taut, it makes a little snapping sound. So, uh, I thought I was using binding. For, for I am using binding, Julie. Which part for what you mean? Oh, right, I'm using binding inside the eyelet hole. Okay, thank you for reminding me. I didn't need to dye that in coffee. Let me go get a piece of binding. Oh wait, I have some right here. I have some right here. So let's see. That stuff's really skinny. This is this is truly how it'll be like this. I think I could get that through there. Let's try one. We can actually put this on right now, and that would be a smart thing to do, to be honest. See, not blood. <laughs> Just carelessness. When I was a full-time pattern drafter, my hands were, they were just a wreck. I can't get that through there. Thank you for reminding me, Julie. Hmm, I really want to use eyelets now, and I really want to use binding. Which one is going to win? I have these old rivets. They are kind of the same size, though. I mean snaps, oh, uh, eyelets. This one, funnily, don't you think that's a huge hole though? Look at that. I need something in between. I just don't have anything. We just can't have it all, you guys. All right, so what do we vote for? Do we vote for eyelets? Wait, do I have something else that could go through it? But I want the binding. <laughs> binding, I know. I want the binding to go th to be there. I don't think I can get this through the... Um... Did I just drop two of those? Yep, here's the other one. Yeah, it's just... I can get it through, but it's tight. So we won't do that. So let's do a Spanish snap and binding then. Tape this shut. Put 
this back in my my eyelet bin. Everyone's yelling binding. Yeah, I think the binding is gonna be super cute. So, or just, it, it'll just coordinate nicely. I'm gonna get this one eyelet out of here. I saw it, here it is, right here. That's an eyelet, this is, these are two snaps. Good to know I have them. But um, I don't wanna think I have three in there. Snap drawer, eyelet drawer. We could put these in here. I'm so into the organization. All these, I got all these little tools. So many tools. Oh, I don't have the other side of this one. Okay. I can't think of another clever, um, Make sure there's none in my, my rivet drawer. I just created a rivet drawer. So yeah, I don't have anything in there either. Okay, perfect. Spanish snap it is. Yeah. Plus then I don't have to get my uh, <laughs> home machine out. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right, we have our draw cord here. We have our binding here. So we got all that. And then we have our fronts. We'll do our fronts first. So let's put these in the drawer the way we plan on doing it. This is folded pretty badly, but put our bottoms in here. All right, we have our waistband is last, our backs next to last pockets and fronts like that. And uh, we're gonna make our draw cord right away and we'll do our Spanish snap. Well, actually we do this right, we'll do this at the end. But we need to do our binding right away. Cool, we're ready to go. I won't even touch that till tomorrow. And I'm gonna do an overlock, oh, oh. I bound the inside of this, you know? I bound the inside of this jacket. I don't know if I want to do that on the pants, though. Hmm. You know? Oh, so bright. What do you guys vote for? What am I gonna use for the Spanish snap facing fabric? Maybe I'll just use a piece of that um, jersey. That's what the waistband is. Or actually, I'll probably use this. That's what I'll probably use. I'll just cut a little piece of this off and have it ready. Let's cut it off of this end, this corner right here. Well, yeah, we'll just do this. And then I'm gonna interface that piece for the um, reinforcement. I even organized all of my little pieces of interfacing. So this like piece right here will be perfect. We'll take this one off. And we'll just cut a piece of this to go with that. I get everything ready, you guys. Everything. <laughs> yeah, don't you think, Elizabeth? I think the serging will be less bulky. And I just think it's really gratuitous to just bind the side seams. So, gift bag. I'm making, I'm finishing two today. Oh yeah, let's pull out a gift bag. I gotta turn down the brightness before I um, do that though. <laughs> before I pull my, my um, jacket away. And this will be a good test for the um, new serger setup that I have because I'm going to be, I have a new camera setup over there. Let me put 
this with the waistband down here. And then our leftover fabrics. All right, so I'm, I'm making a gift bag with every project this year. So by the end of the year, I have 12 new gift bags. I actually made two for the last project. What do I want? What do we want? Are any of these cut out already? I think I want to do a couple of small ones because I had to make some recently because I didn't have any small ones. Yeah, exactly, Shim. People, people meaning my dogs and my husband. <laughs> I haven't even taken that home yet. <laughs> that jacket. I haven't even gotten to use it. I'm, I'm feeling very, uh, like I'm trying to honor the, um, <laughs> the jacket doesn't get to get used until <laughs> I have, uh, the pants. Maybe I'll line it with this bright blue this time. Hmm. Maybe I could cut out two bags. And then one of them, or two of them, I could cut out three little bags. Let's see if these lining scraps, ooh, these lining scraps will work. Yeah. Maybe not that piece. It's weird lining. This stuff, I am so sick of this stuff. It is fiddly. <clears throat> All right, so there's two linings. Two linings. Two bags there, and then one bag here, and I'm gonna make a like a different sized bag this time. We'll use the grid on the table, and I also think that I'm gonna start um, pre-cutting the corners. That's just faster. Here, we'll use this. What's the biggest we can make this? These rulers confound me. <laughs> <clears throat> So we can make this, wait, one, okay, yeah, nine by 10. Yeah, that, that works for me. Let's do that. Nine by 10. This is the way to go. We're gonna cut all this at once, you know? Isn't it supposed to be, wasn't it like, or maybe 11? Nine by 11? And we'll still do a little gusset. This could be big enough for the little top thing. Or this one could be. Look at that. Okay. What size of a bottom do we want? Maybe like a two by two. Hmm. We just want like a like a three inch wide gusset. So we're gonna make this one and a half inch square. This it's funny how Reusing a ruler is a skill, and these are not my strong suit, like using these kinds of rulers. They're really great, though, like for doing stuff like this. It makes it a lot faster. That looks bigger. <laughs> okay. My little interior corner trick. Like that, all right. Yeah, you know, Amy, I, I feel like I will wear that jacket out of the house. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so this is almost the exact right size, so we just need to square it up a little bit. Let's make it... Like that, and... that okay one bag cut maybe we can use that as for that bag 
and then there's two more that we're going to cut. Thanks for reminding me, Leah. I am doing so, I have started the year off strong with this little project. And I am tearing through these scraps of fabric. So I'm happy with that. And I'm going to have all these little gift bags, which is great. So let's see, seven and a half by seven and a half is what we're going to go for here. We're, this is how, look how efficient I'm getting with these things. Cutting out the lining and the outer at the same time. <laughs> and if I don't like this, I will learn and do it differently next time. Okay. I don't know if I'll sew all three, but we, we never know. <laughs> okay, so we have that. I'm not going to move this. Uh, I'm going to make this a little tiny gusset. So we're just going to do a little one inch corner. Because that'll be a two inch gusset, right? Let's do it a tiny bit more than an inch and a quarter because of the seam allowance. I'm just going up to that corner the best I can and then I'm going to clean it up with the, the corner trick. Keeping all these stacked up. I'm like, I'm like really concentrating. These shifted just a little bit. Lift these up. Okay. Boom. Okay, so we just need the casing because we're still, I'm still doing that weird little casing thing. <clears throat> but, you know, honestly, I, I might change it up just to have some different designs. Ooh, could I do two little case? Look at that, I could do two tiny little casings. <laughs> oh, oh, I have it on, I don't have it on um, live chat. Thank you for saying hi to Leslie because I did not see someone named Leslie say hello. <laughs> I still don't see it, but um, yeah, I had it on uh, top chat because that's the default, and I do not know why. I wish they would just take it away. Show me all the chat. For those of us who don't have toxic chats, it would work fine. Is this, this is just a little too small? Because we have to hem this. So let's grab a couple from the bin that are pre-cut. We have all these here, too. So we have these little kitties. This could be cool. Oh, yeah, I think that's a winner. One, two, three. Is there a fourth? Come on, give us a fourth. I wouldn't have cut an odd number, would I? I might have, actually. We could do the um, Pantones. It's not even Pantones. We'll do the Pantones, actually. There's two of those. New subscriber. Oh, welcome to the stream, Leslie. Um, this is a weird little thing I'm doing at the end of all, or not the end, but the, um, every time I make a project this year, I am going to also make a gift bag with some scrap fabric that I already pulled last year. So that by the end of the year, I have a lot of gift bags because I am so tired of wrapping presents in wrapping paper. <laughs> How wide is that? Is it like... It's two and a half inches. All right. I'm putting, I'm lining it up with the grid on my table so I can kind of cheat. It's kind of sad to lose these little um, letters though. I think I'll keep this as a tie. 
And so far my little, uh, you know, endeavor here is going pretty strong. I've made three bags I um, already, and uh, I made two more to fit the gifts that I'm making for my sister. Okay, so there's one for that one, right? So we need to make this a little smaller. All right, cool. I'll take out the coffee stained twill tape now that I have that. I probably want white twill tape now that I have coffee, I stained it. Will we sew all three of these? Maybe. Oh, Terry, yeah. I mean, I, I have, um, we have one bag here, two. I need two bags here. I have lots of these. I buy them by the dozen because, yeah, that edge will get chewed up, and it gets chewed up in different ways. It'll also um, grade it down a little bit and it gets inaccurate. You're not probably doing, you know, professional pattern drafting with it, though, so I wouldn't worry about that part. I have too many right now. I have three over here. So I usually have one for marking grain lines with and one for measuring with. Okay, so there's one and that goes with that. So I just need two more for one more bag. Could I get... If this was ironed... <laughs> That's the selvage edge there though, so we'll go by that. What time is it? Oh, it's already one, okay. Hmm. It's also uneven. <laughs> trying to use the, it's sideways too. Maybe I'm trying to push it too hard using this little piece here. Oh, I got two new projects from Hearts. I'm going to show you. What's that? You, you, you never, you never, yeah. I mean, I definitely don't keep everything. I'm a little more brutal about it, but I have a, I have a use for my scraps because I've been using them in the mulch mats. And I have to say those work really, really good. I love them. My husband loves them. Like they are doing their job. It's great. I put some around this cactus the other day because there's so many in our yard. <laughs> and um, I do not like weeding around it but if I don't they get overgrown and it just looks bad like I, I'm not all about cactus that's for sure but you know I, I don't want them to look terrible either there we go and I just put them around these cactus and they look so good like there there's all this new growth of grass coming around and they're not infiltrating it which is which is nice let me show you the two projects I got sent so you know how I've been wanting to um, draft a tuck shirt? I still plan on doing this because this isn't exactly what I want. But um, they sent me this new pattern company they're carrying. It's French. The directions are in French, Maison Fauve. And it is a little tuck shirt. And it comes in a lot of different styles. I think the way this looks on the models that I've seen it, I think the short sleeve version looks the safest <laughs> as far as like how it fits. Uh, the dress is just like, I, th that style dress looks really funny on me when it's just straight and there's no shaping. So I'm gonna go probably for this little short sleeve shirt. Um, I love that there's a little back yoke detail so it's not a coffin shirt. <laughs> Um, and then uh, they let me pick out the fabric, and then there's some nice little buttons. And this so somewhat inadvertently coordinates with this. Remember this pattern that we reviewed on uh, the Ask a Sewy Question show? The yeah, the tucked top, the one I designed. I will do that one for sure. So, um, okay, Terry, have a good dinner. I'm hungry too. I need to eat, dinner, eat, I need to eat lunch. Yeah, the rotary knife with those red rulers is a little bit uh, scary. Okay, 
I ended up buying this pattern just personally. I was gonna make it. There was something about it I really liked and I wanted some more shorter things to go with the two pairs of pants I made recently, the Merriam trousers and the Mitchells, which are very, very high-waisted. Um, so I got, this is the fabric I picked out, this plaid. Yeah, the photo is in plaid and I stuck with the plaid thing. I think this, I like this one. Um, here's the rub though, the sizing. There is another size group here. Um, this is the XS to L and I'll be making the large. And then there's another group and I think it goes to, it's L to 3XL. It is still not very inclusive. I'll just be very straight up about that. Um, I never planned on live streaming this. Um, I just planned on making it because I was like, why not? And I didn't really research it for the sizing. I had, but I, they all get muddled for me. Um, so I will be making this live. I'm just warning you that it is not as size inclusive as everything else I sew here. So it does come in another size envelope, but still not very size inclusive. So those are the two projects they sent me, which is nice. The jacket is not lined. It's not lined, right? But I was thinking of lining it. That's funny you should say that. Waist short jacket with raglan sleeves and a wide waistband. Yeah, it's not lined. The fabric doesn't require lining. I was thinking it would be very easy to line it though. It's got, it's a raglan, but it has a shoulder seam, which is kind of interesting. But it's cute. I think it's really cute. I think it'll look really good with the Mitchells. I mean, do you think that that fabric will look good with my Merriam trousers? This is more of a rust than a gold. I think it'll work. We'll see. <laughs> I ended up putting my Merriams back together. I decided not to alter them. I'm just going to wear them like that. So, all right. Okay, well, I'll see you tomorrow. I am sewing part one tomorrow of these pants and part two on Saturday. So I hope I'll, I'll see you guys again. And um, yeah, have a good have a good afternoon, you guys, or day for those of you in Australia and New Zealand that come. And have a good evening. Thank you, Gainer, exactly. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Bye.